friends, this is just a basic introduction to data mining in high frequency trading. As you see, there are different reasons for using algorithmic trading. As this graph shows, uh, you see that most portions are related to optimal executions and systematic trading. And then we have something else, such so as hedging, portfolio management, pre-trade analytics, post-trade analytics, news analytics, economic forecasting, and others. So, the distinguishing characteristic of high-frequency trading is a short position holding times, one day or shorter in duration, usually with no positions held overnight. So, all high-frequency tradings are systematic and algorithmic trading platforms, but not all systematic and algorithmic trading platforms are high-frequency trading, so there is a one-directional relationship. As I have talked in the previous videos, you know that we have a queue of orders, and then we find a spread using these informations. So, as you see, when a market buy order arrives, it is matched with the limit sell orders, beginning with those placed at the best ask price. So, if the size of the incoming market buy order is greater than the size of best ask queue, the market order sweeps. So, the market order sweeps through other offer queues in the direction of increasing price. It is eating up, it is eating up all liquidity available at those price ticks. Sweeping leaves a significant gap in limit orders on the ask side. So simultaneously, instantaneously increasing the bid ask spread and uh, so potentially we have, uh, we are inducing slippage in subsequent market buy orders. So we have different kinds of exchanges. The most standard exchange, it is based on price time priority, first in, first out. And uh, as you see, the oldest limit buy order placed at the best bid earliest is executed first. And we have pro rata execution schedules. The policy of using pro rata is based on uh, it promotes traders to trade in, in very large sizes. It also does not encourage traders to delete their limit orders. So it's just a policy. But most of the standard is first in, first out. As you see, it just sweeps it away. And um, let's see what are high frequency data. Uh, we have ticks, okay? All data is in ticks. We use fixed protocol. Fixed protocol is a, is a protocol on top of UDP and TCP. So it has something like protocol buffer uh, or Avro, if you are familiar with in uh, software engineering. Uh, so um, we don't use UDP because exactly uh, just because, for example, Skype uses UDP because it doesn't matter if it that lose data or not. But we want acknowledgement, so we use TCP, although it, it, has, it has a little bit latency, but we use TCP. Here, we use a, a fixed protocol on top of TCP, because we have some fields, the required fields, and such as timestamp, financial security identification code, bid price, ask price, available bid size, available ask size, last trade price, last trade size, so this is an example of the code uh, for for code for high frequency data for SMP 500. So this is the estimation of market impact. How much would the trader move the price if he were to make the trade? We can find these uh, regressions. We can just calculate the regression using Java, some others use C++. But the simple relationship is between changes of uh, price from time t to tau, which is related to volume. 
But if you need a very complex uh, relationship, maybe it is better, it has a better error, less error, then you use the complex one. So, so delta P represents tau taking changes in price from T to tau, as you have said. Uh, v of T, volume, denotes the size of the trade recorded at time T. Little sigma at time T is the estimate of the short-term volatility and can be measured in several ways. For example, um, standard deviation. The, the next variable is S hat of T is the average spread observed during toe startics. And the last variable is T hat at time t is the average clock time between every two subsequent trades. So there are four cases. Market doesn't move. The next case is market moves and rebounds, as you see in this slide, this graph. It rebounds to the previous prices. And the third case is a trade moves market. So you see that there is an offset. And the last case is the cutes widen. So we predict market movement using order flow. What is order flow? A very important variable, xt. It is the difference between uh, trading volume resulting from market buy orders matched with the ask side of the order book. Okay. It should be matched. And uh, via time t for the bid is the trading volume triggered by market sell orders hitting the bid side of order book. And uh, so we have a uh, row, we have a autocorrelation, and then we have a more complex regression verb. As you see, there are some variables. R is one trade returns. D of T is the dummy indicator. Do you know indicator? It is uh, the, uh, the function that we use in financial engineering. If, for example, it belongs to a set, it is one. If it, if it does not belong to the set, so it is zero. So it is the standard indicator function. So order flow imbalance has a linear relationship with short time price changes.